in general to you all from Bangladesh and those who are watching from around the world to them greetings as well thank you so much for joining our second day of women entrepreneurship congress so this is our second day and we are about to begin our session at the very beginning i want to say that today i am with you ms beauty akhtar the congress chair so and here the women entrepreneurship congress is going to be uh, organized by jafudin international university in association entrepreneurship bangladesh and female innovators hub at the beginning of our session i would like to say that, that yes uh, women entrepreneurs we talked about women entrepreneurs from the very beginning they have acted like women leaders in our country now what we need to do is that sometimes we know that access to finance is making or holding back women for getting the chance to be a women entrepreneur on that very issue we are going to about to start this program and to discuss about this issue we have with us a good number of panelists and that is i want to introduce you with our renowned panelists those who are expert in this field first of all we have with us ms padma jaruparay co-founder and president indian angel network Next, we have Ms. Daniela Arsboske, President at Macedonian Chamber of Commerce. We have with us Ms. Wanfar Ayu Ahmed, Co-Founder and CIO, Kanjun Ventures. And we have with us Manta Ahmed, President, Bangladesh India Business Council and Board Member, SME Foundation of Bangladesh. To all the panelists to our session, thank you so much for joining us. So before starting our main program, I would like to ask uh, Padmaja Ma'am to give a short introduction of herself to our audience so that they get to know about your activities. Ma'am, did you hear me? Can you, can, me? can you hear me? Yes, Admiral, ma'am. Can you can you have the short introduction of your as with us? Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, delighted to be on this panel. Uh, my name is Patmija Rupural. I come from India. Uh, I have been an entrepreneur. I worked in the software services sector. I have been in the entrepreneur ecosystem for now over 20 years, having set up TIDE, the Venture Capital Association, and now co-founder of both a large, first and large Indian group in India, and a founding partner of the fund. So I, I, I am a player in the uh, early seed and early stage investing ecosystem was different. Uh, uh, publications and platforms. Thank you, madam. Can we have now please Ms. Danella for her short introduction? Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, 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 thank uh, you so thank much, you madam. madam. Can we Can have, have Ms. Danella for, for the short introduction? introduction? Can you, Can you hear, me? hear me? Yes. yes. I don't think she can hear you. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you. I hope that yes, Ms. Yes, yes. It's uh, first of all, I'll be to thank you for your kind invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure to be a panelist today uh, together with all these. Uh, important in the leadership of the World uh, Chambers Federation 
and uh, hopefully uh, after this insightful panel uh, we will have uh, women entrepreneurs being more unable to uh, continue in the world of entrepreneurship thank you so thank much, you so much madam uh, can we have the introduction from one farah Hello everyone, uh, all women entrepreneurs around the world. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you here. Uh, I'm Van Farah from Kanbun Ventures, Malaysia. And uh, my experience is in venture capital uh, since 2004. And uh, after 2012, uh, 2012, I became an entrepreneur myself. I uh, did uh, many, many sort of things. And uh, I started uh, in more than 1,500 companies when I was uh, in a VC and uh, late last year uh, also registered back to become a GP um, heading a Kanban Ventures right currently and we are uh, piloting into collaborating with everyone in the ecosystem. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too, Juan Farah. So last we have another panelist with us, Ms. Mantash Ahmed. Can you please give your short introduction? Uh, thank you, Beauty Akta, for inviting me to this panel. Uh, my heartfelt greetings to all the sisters who have joined from uh, different parts of the world. I'm uh, the uh, president of uh, Bangladesh India Business Council of uh, Wiki, which is Women's Indian Chamber of Commerce and uh, Industries. Uh, and I'm also the founder president of Association of Fashion Designers of Bangladesh, AFDB. Um, I uh, basically work with a lot of weavers and artisans and uh, entrepreneurs and fashion designers in the fashion sector of Bangladesh. And recently we've uh, formed a, a, an e-commerce uh, website called Deshi Bhalabashi. Uh, to promote uh, their work. Thank you. Thank you, madam. As we are going to move to the, our next uh, important discussion, uh, our session name is Make on, uh, Women Entrepreneurs Financially Capable. How to? So first of all, I start with the question, how do you evaluate the access to finance for the women entrepreneurs in your region as well as globally? Starting from uh, Padma Jamem. Oh, okay. So um, let me let me start talking from the perspective of India because that is what I know best. Uh, actually, a lot of a lot of entrepreneurship itself is driven by the social fabric that the country has, and in India specifically, I would say, and perhaps it may extend to the subcontinent, is we haven't seen too much. Uh, we haven't seen women coming out and working for a very long time. It's starting to happen now, at least in this country over the last three, four decades, where you have a whole uh, brigade of women who've become professionals, whether it be it in the banking, with IT, etc. So what we are seeing over the last 10, 15 years is we are seeing entrepreneurs who are building scale-up ventures, looking for risk capital, which is usually angel or VC money, that of course has started. And we have some very leading uh, and marquee companies that have been set, like Kirin Mazumdar Show of Biocon, we have the Nika lady, and we have a whole host of other ladies. But uh, when when these women uh, start, start their companies, in India we are seeing very, very professional uh, diligence on how they are being evaluated for investment and believe me there is no real difference between gender when they are getting evaluated. That's on the one side. Uh, the other piece that I think we are seeing is a whole host of women who have for decades now started what we call small boutique companies and those have been very successful. In fact I feel that many of the small office, home office kind of businesses that women start from home and then sort of scale it up, not too big, but enough to keep them going, have become the backbone of many, many households in this country for uh, their livelihoods, you know, and just keep the home fires burning. There, I think we, we do have two pieces. Number one, banks probably are the only way of providing uh, any sort of funding, but um, in India specifically, I, and when I speak to Sri Lanka and a little bit in Pakistan, I, I don't think it's easier, easy raising money there. There is a whole host of issues of mortgaging and collaterals. Now the issue that happens with mortgaging and collaterals 
again goes back to our social fabric. Uh, I think many of us on this panel, or perhaps all of us sitting on this panel, are not examples of that kind of issues that largely women face. But women do not have the authority of the assets that they can mortgage, be it in their own name or otherwise. Okay, because when they need to mortgage something or they need to sell their assets or whatever, they need quote unquote social some approval from either their father, husband, brother, or son, okay? And that is very debilitating, as much as the assets may be sitting in their names. Hence, raising money for small entrepreneurs from, from banks becomes a huge issue. In India, however, what has happened is uh, there is a, there is, I think over the last four years or so, under five years, let me put it that way, banks do have a special category of loans that they are giving to women. So women can go and access their loans up to about a crore, which is about uh, 150,000 US, which uh, is only given to women founders and at special interest rates. And they also relax a bit on the collateral side. It's not completely gone away, let me tell you that, but it makes it easier. So overall, I think there are challenges on the one hand, on the other hand, for especially for, for, for entrepreneurs who are raising money on debt, but, uh, but I think it's a very slow move, but it's gradually opening up. But if I look at the VC money or the angel money or what we call the equity money, I don't think there's any difference between a woman and a man. I think um, they're evaluated equally. I think ju just the flavor of the question may be different. They're more polite for women, perhaps. They're, they're driven more by how you do multitask as you build a family. But believe me, I, I sit on many, many investment committees and the same questions we ask the men, perhaps in a different flavor. So I, I think equity financing is uh, gradually increasing in this country. About 14% uh, of funded investor uh, investments from the VC's ecosystem, early stage angel VC ecosystem are women founders. And that's very encouraging because that has almost doubled over the last three years. What we are seeing in our deal flow now, we get about 13,000 business plans a year. I sit on the Global Business Angel Network, which I'll just chat about also. I think we are seeing about 35 to 37% of the brands coming in with both co-founders as women and at least 60% with at least one co-founder as women. So I, that has moved. On the global side, I think as you asked, uh, Beauty, I think uh, similar situations and similar uh, challenges do exist even in developed countries. We have data from the UK and the US and Canada and Singapore. I think we're seeing similar things, similar challenges. Um, the challenges are around mortgaging. The challenges still exist as much as we think they don't around uh, true ownership of assets. Uh, the BC ecosystem is very active. I think the one country where we are seeing from the global perspective where this is challenge is even more marked is actually Japan, if I may say so. It's much more conservative and it's becoming, uh, it is difficult. But all in all, I think uh, I would leave this discussion on a very positive note. Things have moved and things will move. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, you have shared a good scenario of the Indian uh, women entrepreneurs and they give a uh, in uh, other countries as well. Thank you so much for sharing such great news. Uh, now, I, if I come to the Daniela, so can you please share your, your views and evaluation on this very topic? Thank you, Betty. Uh, well, I, w I would just, uh, because all the ladies have really relevant experience on the topic and I'm sure that uh, further than the discussion, we will uh, talk a little more on what are the sources of finances which women can uh, 
turn to when uh, they start as entrepreneurs. I would just like to give a kind of a framework on what we're facing on this uh, uh, topic uh, worldwide. So uh, what I believe is very important when we discuss about women entrepreneurs and their financial capability, but also in this sense we talk about their financial independence. What is different with genders uh, is a question and it's very important to uh, reach some uh, really uh, important, um, let's say, uh, facts on how we can achieve sustainability when women entrepreneurs are in question. So, from the research that we have available and the other like global uh, research, uh, we know that women are committed to their businesses. Uh, we know that uh, they averagely invest about 39% of their income back to, into their businesses, which is not very common. Uh, with uh, male, even though we would like to say that we want to be equal and we are equal, we are still looking for equal opportunities, but also we have our own uh, value for being women entrepreneurs and we should really use this in order to achieve greater success in business. So, also what is very important that um, even though that they invested the percent of their income back to the companies, uh, they uh, use about 78% of their savings and out of everything that they have uh, to uh, just push their businesses forward. Uh, they tend to stay in business and the average rate for business discontents about uh, when women are, let's say, uh, in question is about 10% lower uh, than uh, those of uh, men. So it's very important to know that entrepreneurs show, uh, especially women entrepreneurs, they show a strong survival skills in business because they are always so meticulous and they really carefully plan their approaches in the business strategy. So this is a very important, I think, uh, to stress when women are questioned. They have a different approach towards business. So uh, the financial needs of women uh, entrepreneurs differ from those from men. I know, again, that we will say we probably think that we are equal when going to the banks and applying for credits uh, is in question, but the facts, the numbers say that that is not uh, completely so because, uh, however, we would like to uh, say that we are equal and that we would like to have these equal opportunities, still women are perceived as someone who is relatively new into entrepreneurship when uh, men have this uh, long, long history of being into business. So we are perceived kind of differently. So the financial needs of women entrepreneurs uh, are really different from men. They are considered in the banking sector, especially that they are really more reliable repayers of credit. And uh, this is demonstrated by the uh, experience of the banks uh, which they have with women in developing economies. So uh, what I would end this uh, part of the discussion with is that I believe that further down the uh, discussion we will discuss what are the specific types of finances that women need to have uh, as entrepreneurs. But what I believe is very important is to stress that uh, to make women financially capable, finances are not the only key. Uh, they need also knowledge, they need education, they need skills, they need business assets, they need the support from the family, and also they need easy access to childcare uh, however, this seems to be strange, but it's really one of the necessities that all women have, especially those which have small children and for those which have extended families, uh, which they need to tend to. So these are very, very important issues, not only money and cash and uh, cash flow and finance, but also some other things which can translate further down the line to finance. Thank you so much, Ranala. Now I would like to come to the one Farah. Uh, you are from Malaysia, so can you please share the scenario of Malaysia uh, for the women entrepreneurs? Uh, thank you, Vicky. So in Malaysia, uh, there's a lot of uh, initiatives and uh, facilities made available to both genders, men and women. But uh, for women, uh, we also have a lot of uh, facilities as well. We recognize that women spend a lot of their income towards their family needs and uh, sometimes they might not be able to actually start business uh, from their own capital ways because they spend it on some other things first. So um, the, the problem arises when you go to the bank and then um, 
uh, the banks might set uh, this uh, different, uh, quite high requirements for them to actually apply for the loan. So uh, the bank might require a, a top line of 100,000 when they are MSMEs, the micro SMEs, so that's not fair for the women. Um, but uh, the bank that did that uh, for uh, monitoring the risk actually. It's actually to, to make sure that the loan requirements are on, on time and in line. But I believe that women are good uh, pay payback. When they, they, they service the loans, they are really good in that. So in Malaysia, there's uh, many, many uh, uh, facilities made available. Uh, there's also alternative financing through the crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding platforms, uh, peer-to-peer lending platforms, and also uh, angels that are inclined towards uh, helping women to uh, succeed in their businesses. So uh, we, we realized that uh, for the women to go ahead uh, with their business, uh, when they go and approach the bank, they have to prove good financial standing. And then uh, they might, uh, as uh, Ms. Panmaja said, there's now required to provide collateral lien or assets to actually support the loan. And uh, those um, actually uh, can be resolved if the financial institutions are willing to uh, lower a bit their requirements to uh, come up with a program to help these women to actually um, meet these requirements. Maybe sort of a hand-holding uh, program or mentoring program like uh, Mr. Nella mentioned just now. So yes, uh, in Malaysia, the uh, situation of financing for women is quite uh, positive. Only uh, of late when they actually dish out one of the initiatives uh, because the resources, the, the amount is uh, uh, only limited uh, amount. Uh, so it has to be like first come, first serve. Yeah, that's the only uh, problem. Now <laughs> it's a limited amount of money. Even though it's huge amount of money, uh, it's like a first come, first serve kind of thing. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wanfara. Uh, now I would like to come to Mantasha. As you work for SMA Foundation, uh, also Bangladesh India Council. So can you please share the scenario? Uh, yes, thank you, Vidya. I, think, um, um, I share, uh, I think Bangladesh shares some of the basic challenges that uh, the other um, uh, participants also talked about. We do have, uh, you know, the social and cultural barriers for women. So, uh, you know, from the family, they'll uh, um, get some sort of obstacle. Uh, they're not uh, probably allowed to go out as much as a man or a main member would uh, go out. Um, and then there's a lot of other uh, non-financial challenges, you know, like access to technology and access to proper documentation. When you open a business, you need to get a trade license. And for the trade license, you need an official address. So not all women, in fact, most women do not have the official addresses. So how do they open a proper business? And then when they overcome all these obstacles, they go to the bank for financing. And they, they there she is receiving the second uh, phase of challenges, which is uh, obviously, you know, there's a very complicated, very complex application procedure. Uh, she will need uh, some collateral, although, you know, under the leadership of our uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, uh, these things are a bit relaxed at the moment, but only up to a certain amount, you know. So let's say, for example, up to 20 lakhs or 30 lakhs, which is about just over 25,000 US dollars, a woman can have access to finance without a collateral, but in that case, she, she may need a guarantor. And the guarantor would have to be her husband or a father or a son or, you know, a male member. So what happens to a woman who doesn't have a male member in the family? You know, she's, she wants to operate independently. Why can't she be evaluated on, you know, her business proposal? And there is a lacking as well because a lot of women don't even know how to write a proper business proposal. Then comes, you know, costing and other things. So she'll probably set up a business, but when she actually sells her merchandise or products, then, you know, there's costing and there's the pricing and all that. So definitely there's some lackings there. And in Bangladesh, actually, 65% um, of uh, our men have bank accounts, whereas only 35% of the women have bank accounts, uh, which is still uh, above the regional average um, uh, in, in, in South Asia. So um, uh, I think uh, we're doing quite well. Like our sister from India said that, you know, we, we, we should uh, uh, talk about positive things as well. Uh, definitely the number of women participation has increased um, uh, in, in various sectors, especially in SME. And the loan repayment rate of uh, women-owned SMEs, um, uh, you know, the recovery rate is uh, more than 99%. Uh, but then when they're going to the banks, again, they're facing these challenges. Um, 
the application procedure and you know uh, the bank officials are not always cordial uh, like we discussed earlier um, uh, they're, they're probably more cordial to uh, men owned SMEs than female owned SMEs uh, so yeah these mm -hmm. are the challenges and you know um, uh, Finance uh, financing options are also quite limited at the moment in Bangladesh. We do have venture capital, we do have angel network, but those are for the niche market and the mainstream. Um, uh, you know, more, most women are still getting into mainstream banking or microfinance. Um, so, you know, we you have uh, questions relating to that. So perhaps I should answer that later. Uh, but there, um, when a woman obtains a uh, let's say an SME loan. There's also maybe it's uh, at a single digit as per the uh, uh, instruction of the Honorable Prime Minister. So it could be 9%, but then there will be hidden charges, which, uh, you know, beforehand you will not uh, take into account. So um, these are some of the problems. And, uh, uh, um, yeah, like I said, that, you know, non-friendly, non-woman friendly um, banking environment. So that those are the things that uh, we really uh, need to need to work on. And also, I think uh, for SMEs, especially in uh, women-owned SMEs, there should be a certain grace period, uh, which we don't have at the moment. So as soon as they take the loan, they start uh, paying the interest uh, on the loan. So if if that could be arranged, I think that 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 would be quite helpful for our women. And I think uh, that for working mothers, um, uh, like another participant mentioned, uh, it's very important, especially in 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 our culture. It's it's actually the mother that nurtures the children and the family members. So it's it's very important that a woman uh, gets those kind of support, and uh, the banks should also consider uh, those things when issuing a loan. So yeah, the whole process should be much easier, I think. And thank you, Mantasha, for giving us such relevant information about the women entrepreneurship and the finance. So back to Padmaja, Madam. Uh, or as you have talked about many financing, equity financing, venture capital financing. So I, even you talked about the collateral challenges that women face. So uh, out of these challenges and fundings, which one would you like to suggest that which one is the best for the women entrepreneurs to take at the early stage? You know, Beauty, uh, I would look at it slightly differently. Uh, I would look at it in terms of um, what is the kind of business that the entrepreneur is putting together. So uh, first, that would be one of my first parameters. If there is a if there is a business that is very scalable, differentiated, going after a large market, then there is risk money that can be that is one option, which is where you get angel money, venture capital money, or what we call equity money. Okay, which is selling your shares. Or at a certain price and raising money. That's, I think, number one. Number two, I think raising money from banks is a challenge, but smaller businesses, those that are starting up and not likely to be very big businesses, I think it is the smaller business, uh, the banks that will be more helpful. And I think each country has its challenges and maybe some kind of scheme, so it will have to fit into that. The third piece that I would uh, like to share is in all companies, irrespective of it, whether it is a large scale up business or a small small business, I think what we call the triple F money is very useful, which is family, friends and friends money. So trying to bring that piece together to sort of either borrow or to get uh, your family or your friends or people who really have faith in you, who are not really looking at the potential of the business as much as trying to say, Hey, so and so she's doing this, let me encourage her or I'd like to support her. I think that's a very, very valuable and under, yet understated pool of money that can be very useful for women. So that is what we call family, friends and uh, fool's money, though many people call it family, friends and faith money. But I think it is, it is a very critical pool of money that everybody will be able to I think hopefully everybody should be able to access. And finally, irrespective of which kind of business you're doing, I think there is one very critical piece of funding which people don't realize. Okay, uh, It is called customer revenues. Start small, start building your customers, start getting revenues. It is one of the most old-fashioned ways of building business. 
but it is one of the most solid ways of building business you don't need to take uh, uh, bring in co investors and sell shares and dilute your company because you know you will then have to be answerable to somebody you don't really need to take a bank loan and give it you know pay back interest and impact your cash flows you don't need to be uh, let's say uh, obliged to family friends for lending you or giving you money the best way is to build your business on your own customer revenues in an organic fashion it's not easy i don't i don't at all say that it's easy but over centuries that has been the model of actually building businesses and we today tend to forget that so i want to bring that up right up on the platform and the last piece which we see much more active in uh, more developed economies and less in developing economies is grant money governments do give grants okay to start up they give a lot of moratoriums they give subsidies they they, they provide a lot of quote unquote free services like you they give you some sort of office space they give you access to different types of services free of cost and in some and also give you some money to start up i think wherever you can get free money go for it is what i would tell anybody but there are no free lunches you may not have to pay back in any form or format but yes there will be some strings getting the money will take longer you have to fill many many pages of forms and applications you will have to um uh, submit utilization reports you will have to uh, adhere to some of the parameters you need to employ so many people or have this kind of impact so i think honestly in life there are no free lunches but these are the five pools of money that entrepreneurs can actually dip into depending on which stage you are where you are uh, what kind of businesses you are you are starting up and of course goes without say that legal, uh, regional local uh, issues or regulations and schemes will make an impact and that i think each one will have to figure it out for itself but broadly these are the five ways of raising money depending on where you are in your business what you are trying to build and how you are trying to build it none of these change universally these pots of money don't this these these kind of pots of Uh, money don't really change it's just that the availability and the frameworks around it are different thank you madam uh, i got uh, to know about the customer money from you yes that's the <laughs> good thing that is one of the important issue if you can use the customer money then you can sustain in the market that's the most important thing. so on the same point i would like to go to danella if she wants to share something about which types of financing are good for the a the women entrepreneurs thank you viti uh, first of all i would like to say that uh, mantasha just made a few very important points and uh, which i believe that they are uh, actually same challenges uh, all over the world not only in her country it's fact that women entrepreneurs face mainly are uh, all same challenges so uh what i would like to uh, revert is to what i said previously and that is uh, how to make women entrepreneurs financially capable does not only depend on the finances so they're not the only key they also need as i said the knowledge the education the skills the business assets and some of the important things like child care access so what uh, patmaja previously touched based on was uh, the crediting and i would say that the main mistakes that uh, some men and women are doing when beginning with entrepreneurship so this is not only uh, gender focused is that they're always dreaming big and they're always trying to make it big which is not the uh, good way to go about it especially in a very competitive world as we live in now so what i would say is that uh, when finances are concerned uh, i believe that microfinance or microcredit has a very good uh, impact and very good results uh, meaning what uh, microcredit actually means that uh, entrepreneurs should not always uh, go big as they dream big they should start with careful planning of their operations and then just ask for a very small amounts of money uh, which as shown in the recent results actually 
uh, suggest that over an extended period of time, this support can improve the business performance uh, within women entrepreneurs. And if done uh, frequently, or let's say twice per year, uh, in a manner in which they can uh, repay these micro credits, it actually can be uh, highly beneficial, and yet they will be eligible for these micro grants. So the second thing which I would also suggest is that, as I said previously, Padmanaja actually just um, said what are the basic, um, let's say, means which women can get as type of financing opportunities. But also it is very important that uh, no matter the amount of money, if you don't have a big, good business plan or if you don't have a good business proposition, all of this will eventually fail. Yes. So what is the second most important thing when having money, not depending on the amount of it, is uh, first I would say mentorship. Uh, usually, as you know from what we have from our uh, global, uh, let's say, research, is that women which receive training and mentoring show that this approach can actually help to increase the business performance due to the sharing of the know-how and the help uh, it, the mentees actually get from their mentors is not uh, doing the same mistakes which they have partners. So connecting mentors to mentees in these and we can see part in, into entrepreneurship. Women need to support other women. Women need to support them individually or through women groups and networks. And this can increase the access to finance, the knowledge and the skills as well. So it's actually very, very important uh, part of the growing and of uh, accessing to finance. So I would just like to add another thing is that uh, as I'm currently the president of the Macedonian Chambers of Commerce, where uh, I have the, one of the largest associations of women entrepreneurs on national level, included uh, when tackling with these issues and challenges that women are facing it's mainly what i have from my personal experience that women often invest themselves 100 percent into the businesses which they're uh, starting and they go all in which actually represents a uh, quite a big risk so uh, this is something to be considered and something to be thought about uh, on the other hand it might be perceived as a good step towards sustainability very often it uh, presents a barrier because women do not create a plan B in their business strategy. So when you go 100% all in, you're all about risk. You're not about calculate, calculating what you can do to manage uh, the situation. So what has shown as a very successful strategy is to always revise your own strategy and try to innovate and to diversify when working on a current business model. Uh, well, you have a business alternative actu uh, on your activities or a plan which you can transcend from the initial business plan. The uh, investment will not be developed, if, if the investment is not developed and, uh, as uh, anticipated, uh, this will give you a plan B. Uh, and this is probably one of the good ways to manage uh, the situation if there is maybe a fail in the initial uh, entrepreneur's business plan. So having a plan B doesn't mean that plan A is set to fail. It only means that you will be prepared just in case that happens. And also, I would say one of the most important things, as I mentioned previously, is to innovate and to diversify. Innovation will help you create a more competitive product and services, and diversification will actually help you create and alternate uh, pathway to detour the investment and not to lose it. So uh, you should you always use the international networks to exchange experiences with women which are doing similar business strategies and activities in a different business env environment. What I have seen is that women communicating from different uh, countries while doing the same business activities in their own country actually exchange these experiences and find a way how to help each other uh, because they don't, uh, they are not competitors in a sort. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. You have said so many things, mentorship, strategy, and so on. Now, can you please, one Farah, share something? Did you hear me? Yes.
you are unmuted me you should unmute yourself yeah you can start okay in the main hall uh, we can listen from mantasha yes it's mantasha uh, yeah thank you beauty um there's many uh, you know but a number of um, uh, financial uh, sectors uh, and uh, available uh, uh, access to finance for women in Bangladesh. You know, we have the mainstream banking, we have microfinance, we have uh, NBFIs, and we have uh, even government funding. There is um, a hundred crore uh, startup fund under the Ministry of uh, Finance. Uh, then there's uh, you know, SME Foundation, um, there's Venturecal, there's Angel Network. So many options are there, but like uh, our other participants said, uh, that first you need to assess what you need the funding for and exactly how much you need. I'll just give you a, a small example of uh, from my personal experience that we're running the Deshi Bhalabashi e-commerce website. And so far, I, we launched it in September, end of August actually. And um, uh, currently there are 70 vendors connected with us. I'm sure the number will increase, uh, especially due to the pandemic. Um, so... Um, so far, we have not taken any funding or applied for loan. Um, and, you know, due to the pandemic, and uh, I'm sure most of our sisters would agree as well that um, a lot of our weavers, artisans, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, they were all stuck with a very large inventory because when the lockdown started in Bangladesh, we had two very major events uh, coming up, which is uh, the Bengali New Year and uh, our, the Eid, our, our religious festival. Um, so they were stuck with a very large inventory, which they couldn't sell. Uh, due to lockdown and uh, about 20 to 30 percent of their stock also got damaged so the main purpose of uh, Deshi Bhalobashi, the website that I'm talking about, is to help uh, these weavers and artisans and entrepreneurs to clear up their stock, existing stock, so that they can reinvest. So, uh, so far we have been able to uh, um, clear up 30 percent of their stock, uh, the fresh stock, um, and uh, according to our business plan, until uh, end of next year, we will not need, uh, you know, outside financing. So what we do is we do profit sharing. So when, when we sell something uh, of a vendor through Deshi Bhalobashi, they share some of their profits with us. Uh, so that is how the company is running its expenses. It's, it's not a very, uh, you know, very big amount, but at least we're managing. So, you know, uh, uh, now at, at present, we're looking at a 10, 5 to 10% profit. Um, so ultimately, when the uh, business expands, when we have more people under the umbrella, even then, we would need money for uh, training. So, you know, in, in Bangladesh, I'm sure it's, it's a scenario in, in, in many other countries that uh, women, not just women, even men in remote areas don't have proper access to technology. Even simple things like taking a proper picture of their product for the website, they're not very, uh, you know, uh, 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 very good at that. So I've received many pictures from many of our vendors, and we had to, we couldn't upload any any one of them. I had to bring all the products to, to Dhaka to my uh, workshop, and then take uh, professional photos. Because when you're buying something online, the first thing you see is the is the photo, and that is the first impression. So you know there are technological challenges, challenges, and everything, and we would definitely need training for that. And and for that, we can uh, have access to government funding. It's it's available, uh, but I do think that there's a lack of dissemination of information on what facilities are available, be it training, be it funding. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Even at the local level, uh, the local government offers various forms of funding, various forms of facilities like you know access to IT and all that. Um, so I think uh, information of dissemination is is very important. And uh, uh, the other thing I would say is that when you start a business, the first thing you need to do is write at least a five-year action plan. Um, and based on that, you proceed. Based on that, you apply for financing. Um, I know that a lot of women, and men and women both, mostly women, they take loans for their daughter's marriage or son's marriage ceremony. But then you're not having any return. How are you paying off the interest? 
you know so this is not a this is not a business loan this is just a personal loan but they'll take it as a business loan so these are things that you know we really need to consider particularly in microfinance we'll come to that later as well but um in microfinance i've seen that from my experience when i was working with uh, different ngos i've seen that a lot of women take microfinance the micro loans from more than one mfi so ultimately the interest compounds and you know to pay off that interest they take loan from another mfi so this is just a vicious circle you know um so yeah i, I think uh, that is the current scenario um yeah thank you beauty uh, thank you so much miss mantasha uh, we are at the uh, end of our session but before that one before before that one i would like to know about few of the suggestions from uh, miss padmaja madam what do uh, what do you evaluate or what are the funding resources should we actually adopt and how to encourage uh, the funding institutions to encourage women to take loan or take funding from their institutions any last suggestion i think that we have done here i'll share those and uh, i don't know how useful they have been but in some cases it has worked what we have done is actually done some sensitization programs with bank officers to give them a sense of the challenges that women face those kind of businesses they are building the kind of uh, uh, issues that they are facing and also to be very honest and candid some of the you know some of the interchanges the interactions that they have with bank officers just to give some sensitization programs and uh, the reason that many of them have got to do business are not just because they want to do business many of these small businesses that women do from their homes from their garages from their small offices etc are really because it is the need of the hour to keep the family fires going so i think these sensitization programs have really helped to at least uh, for the bankers yes they have to stay within the guidelines and the frameworks that they have been given but they just look at things number one differently and they start to see how they can help rather than see how they can obstruct and secondly which is very important is speed you know now they realize why it's important to speed up things in fact i say this very very often and i'll say it here if there are any investors out there uh, who are listening to this irrespective of what type of an investor you are funding delayed is funding denied to a startup or an early stage company because there won't be a company standing there if you don't if you don't want to do it say so but if you want to do it accelerate it that's what i would say and the second piece i think is very important for women uh, in particular uh, look you you may feel it's it you are not equipped to do certain parts of the business then don't start the business honestly own every single aspect of your business you cannot say that oh i don't understand the legal issues or i don't understand the statutory issues or i don't understand the financial issues or i don't know how to do online marketing or i don't know how to build a digital uh, persona it does not work there are you know as women we are 50% of the world if not more population okay Uh, there is nothing that should give us we cannot create advantages for ourselves we cannot cannot create handicaps for ourselves if we want to be considered equal and we want to get the same kind of advantages that anybody else can get i think we have to have the confidence first of all to say we are equal we have to confidently behave that we are equal we have to evince the confidence in others and then there is nothing that can stop us in fact i feel women are much more focused and much more persistent genetically we are we are we are created like that because god has given us certain things which only women can do we, we are the only ones who can who can give birth so giving birth to a business shouldn't be as difficult as giving birth to a baby so all i can say is the only thing stopping you from success is yourself nothing else thank you so much for the lovable words that you have uttered uh, now in in just few words thank you 
So uh, just uh, as a, a short finale, I think that uh, it's very important for women entrepreneurs at this moment to focus on digitalization and in order to be competitive on national and on global markets. And also, I would just like to say as a message, ladies, finance is important, but it's not the only key to success. Uh, so please just help each other, mentor, network, uh, share know-how and support other women. Uh, because I think this is one of the very important things when women entrepreneurs are actually uh, in question. And finally, entrepreneurship is not easy, but it's empowering. And I think this is our reward. So running a business and having the income helps us uh, gain stronger position in the community. And we should all support each other in this mission. So thank you. Thank you, Danada. Any final remarks from one Farah? We cannot hear you. Maybe there is a technical problem. So any final remarks from Mandasha? Yes, thank you. Um, I totally agree with uh, Padma ji. Um, starting a business cannot be more difficult than giving birth or even rearing your children or bringing up your children. Um, so yes, we have to be positive, uh, but I just want to say that in Bangladesh, we have uh, 30 million women who uh, take micro uh, loans from MFIs and uh, ultimately they end up paying 30% of interest or on their loans. So uh, if we can bring these women under commercial banking umbrella, uh, they instead of 10%, the banks can perhaps charge them 15%, which is still half of 30%. Uh, I think that then we can really bring all these women under institutional banking, institutional financing. And uh, definitely, uh, uh, if the application process could be a, more, could be a little more simpler. Uh, and uh, I also, uh, I will repeat what Padmaji said, that uh, when I go to a bank, I should not go as a woman. I should go as a, as a person who is... Uh, or an eligible candidate who's applying for loan. You know, so when you ask for equality, you have to feel equal. You have to be equal. You can't just, uh, you know, uh, expect everyone to treat you uh, like a goddess when, when, you know, you don't have the qualifications or, or you know, when you're not competent enough. So, yes, that is uh, definitely one thing that I will say. And uh, I think that uh, women are very powerful. And if women can utilize their potentials, uh, which uh, also... We need uh, the help of our the male members of our family, like my husband, my father-in-law, my father. They all have supported me. Uh, but not uh, all women have that facility or not all women get that support. So I think that is also very, very important to get support from the family level. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to all our panelists for giving us your valuable time and precious time. We got to know so many things from you. Thank you your time and the key takeaways that we have from our session is that the women you have all the opportunities what you need to do is that you need to have the correct business model if you have that model you will be able to get funding thanks to our panelists thanks to our audience those who are watching us hope to see you in the next session thank you so much from the